You ready? Yeah. Hey, Steph. Hey, what's up, Larry? Let's check out your truck, man. We're here in Glamis, and uh, I'd love to see a tour of it. Yeah, all right. So this is something that I haven't done in a while. I did a video on my 240Z with my buddy Rob, but um, I generally don't like to feature my own vehicles, but I think I'll probably kind of start going through more and more of them just because um, this in particular is a vehicle that we built just to chase off-road racing. This doesn't come out of my garage unless it's for photography or videography reasons. So we use it to chase the Baja 1000, we use it to chase the Man 400, King of the Hammers, anything where we actually need it to basically be capable off-road. So then the idea is like real off-roading, not like overlanding yeah, or something. No, not like, overlanding. You know, you're like, gonna have, yeah. And, and I've been to the dunes, but like I haven't never been this deep in the dunes. Like we're in the dunes and we actually cross the whole width of the Glamis sand dunes in our force induction Toyota vehicles. So Steph drove his RAV4, which is up there. And that's um, 3S GTE swept. Right? Yep, yep. That's a two liter turbo and it's a RAV4 and it's insane and it's very <laughs> capable. And this is more of a off-road focused build from Toyota. I feel like the FJ name, you know, is just something that is synonymous with off-road and capable off-road trucks. This is actually body on frame. And this one in particular is manual transmission, which <laughs> I think less than 1% of them were manual for whatever reason. I'm, I'm guessing it's just not very popular to off-road with a manual transmission. But for me, it's a lot of fun. I love this vehicle so much. It's like one of my dream vehicles. It's so much fun to drive on the street, off-road. Show some of the cool features of this thing. Okay, so now Steph has the camera. Um, we'll start on the outside. This is a 2007, so this uh, gray color actually didn't come out in 2007. So I actually had it wrapped. And while I had it wrapped, I figured, hey, let me just change all the plastic pieces to a Trail Teams Edition plastic, which it's all black trim pieces. And then I just used a uh, black dye and I dyed all of the rest of the pieces back to black. Cause they, after uh, many years of it just kind of sitting out in the sun, it just kind of faded. Other than that, outside appearance wise, we have the KC LED lights. I love those so much because they look old school. They look like they're old school lights, but they actually are LED and they have LED technology. Let's see, got some side steps, some generic side steps that just kind of bolt onto the frame. The wheel and tire combo is awesome because I love, love, love the old school look of the KMC wheels. The thing is, it's one thing to kind of get actual steelies and kind of get that really old school look, but these are actually cast wheels from KMC. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to go 35s. I wanted to go 33s because I still want it to be pretty easy to drive on the street. And I didn't really want to do like a body chop mount or cut anything. So I just kept it 33s. The Yokohama Geolander MTs are incredible tires. They're so good. These are just what we need to be able to chase these off-road races. It's crazy because this is my first time really doing duning with this vehicle and actually really duning at all. And of course, Steph, you know, I was complimenting you for taking me out of my comfort zone. And that's kind of the fun part about car culture. There's just so many things, you know, off-road, on-road, drag racing, drifting. There's just so many things to get into. And yeah, it's it's fun for me to be able to do that. So we'll, we'll keep going on the back. Um, of course it has the spare tire. FJ looks really weird without a spare tire. So we have the fifth tire here. My license plate, Yoda bro. It's like a Yota. A lot of people call Toyotas, especially trucks, Yodas, but uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan, so yeah. Yoda, bro. Suspension, 
It was kind of one of the first things I did when I was building this truck. We run King Shocks in both of my off-road vehicles, in my Tundra and also in the FJ. These just happened to be a set that they had laying around where they actually built it for a customer and for whatever reason, they didn't want them. And this is pretty much like their setup that you can buy off the shelf. I don't, I think it's two and a half uh, inches, but it, and, and okay, so it's a two and a half inch lift on the front. And I just had to get like a little spacer for the spring just to even out the back. I don't know too much about the suspension or I don't know too much about the King Shocks, but I know for a fact they ride so much better than sock. Um, for the front upper control arm, we went with the Baja Kits uh, arm, which really helps in terms of articulation. Of course, the highlight of this vehicle under the hood, really the main highlight of this vehicle is the motor. We have a Magnuson supercharger, which now after adding on an AM intake, it makes about 80 horsepower over stock. Off the top of my head, I think, I think they make 240 horsepower from the factory. Not exactly sure, maybe don't quote me on that, but I know with the supercharger, with the stock intake, I think it was making 305 horsepower to the crank. With the intake, it actually unlocks 20 more horsepower, potentially more. It is running a stock exhaust, or I think it's running like a TRD exhaust. And I wanted to keep it not so loud because I wanted it to be something where we can actually drive. I've been to all over Dumont. I've been to Moab twice with this. I've been to um, King of the Hammers probably 10 years now. I've been to Baja 1000, San Felipe 250, Mint 400, so many I've shot. Just all of these different places with this vehicle shooting off-road racing or shooting off-road something. We got a anti-gravity battery, which is super light. Um, we save about 40 pounds versus like a traditional battery. Yeah, we got a CSF radiator. Definitely keeps it cool, especially because I've been bouncing off the rev limiter like a madman out here in the sand dunes to keep the wheel speed up. Um, we got HPS hoses. We run those in pretty much all of our vehicles. The interesting thing about this vehicle, it's a 2007. So there's actually a bunch of modifications that you have to do to it to kind of strengthen a couple things. Like the place where the motor actually mounts to the frame, that all needs to be strengthened because uh, it wasn't designed so well Later years, they actually fixed it in the second version of the FJ. But um, this one, I actually had to weld on plates, strengthen it because I knew I was gonna be pushing it really hard. Another thing is the stock Toyota throwout bearing actually needed to be upgraded because it's something that's very um, badly designed in that it wears very easily. So we actually modified it to accept a GM throwout bearing and uh, a, a company actually builds that just for all of the manual FJs out there. In terms of oil, we run Penn's oil. Uh, we run 10W30. It's a little thicker than what stock is. I think that they recommend 5W30, but since it's forced induction and honestly, I'm driving this thing so hard, we actually need the power when we're chasing off-road racing but because a lot of people don't understand when you're actually shooting off-road racing, you're running your own race. When the race vehicles go by, we have to get back to the truck as fast as possible because we have to cut them off at the next location. And sometimes if we weren't going fast enough, it's happened where I pull up and I'm literally pulling the camera out of my bag and I see the race truck 
drive by at 100 miles an hour. And literally, if we were three or four seconds earlier, I would have got a shot. So that's why it matters to have a vehicle that can actually keep up. Let's talk about the interior. In here, it's pretty much all business. I have a TRD short shifter and I have the TRD knobs. I love how big this shift knob is. It's just so ridiculous. What's interesting about this transfer case is the manuals are always in four wheel drive, no matter what. The automatics are in two wheel drive when they're on you know, high driving around on the street. When you actually put it into four high, that's when it locks the center diff on an automatic. But on a manual, it's always all wheel drive. And if you click it one up, it goes to high, but center diff. And then one more is low. And then this one actually it has a built-in electronic rear diff lock. And I have that on right now in the dunes. Right now, us running in the dunes, I've been pretty much running third, fourth, and fifth gear. I would even start in third gear. And part of it is because I have the resolution to go in between the gears when I'm in between the dunes, really just to keep the power in the power band. With that said, this thing, it feels like it doesn't, it, it's not that it's lacking power, it has enough power, but it does feel a little top heavy in my eyes, but I'm not a dune expert and I've seen B-more take this truck and just do the craziest things that I wouldn't do. A couple other things, um, have a mount for my lead nav. Um, we have a 60 watt uh, rugged radio system built in here, which is really, really nice to be able to communicate with the guys. We got a bully dog tuner. This is actually what loaded the software for the supercharger. Other than that, pretty much everything else is stock. I got all my patches that I've been collecting, some that are FJ related, some that are not. But this is fun because the top of the FJ is like a Velcro, so you could pretty much stick any patches you want. And I've seen FJs where the entire ceiling, the entire headliner is covered with these patches. This one has pretty low miles uh, because I actually bought it when, when it had about 20,000 miles and I've just been taking it to off-roading. So the miles that get added to it are from going to the races and coming back. And that's why it only has 80,000 miles. I know some of these run to a half a million, maybe even a million miles. The one GRFE, incredible motor. Toyota still makes it brand new today and they're available in their 70 series vehicles. And uh, like our friends at FJ Company, they take those brand new motors built in 2020, 2021 and put them in their FJ40s and it's so cool. What's like the, what have you found to be like the limitations with the car? Well, a lot of people like to complain about the fact that the view from the back is really bad or when you're driving, it's really hard to merge. But honestly, you know, I drive so many cars. I drive right-hand drive, left-hand drive. I drive a lot of things. And yeah, it may be a little difficult when you first start driving it, but once you're used to it, you just kind of have to take a second look and make sure before you merge. The third door is super cool. It's, it's just functional in that you can have more people in the back, but usually it's just two people, you know, navigator and the driver. And we have all of our gear, recovery gear, camera equipment, all of that stuff in the back. How about compared to a 4Runner? Uh, so I love 4Runners. I think they're great, but the later generation 4Runners didn't come in manual. And I really, for whatever reason, wanted a manual truck something that's off-road, something that's capable. There is a really cool feature on this that I'm sure exists on a lot of other manual off-road vehicles, but I don't know if this is something you've ever seen. It's a clutch start cancel. Basically, let's say if you stall it when you're crawling on a rock, you don't actually have to clutch in and turn the key to start again. You could just push that button and you can crank and for a second, the, the truck acts like an electric vehicle. Basically, it's running off the starter. And from that bump, it'll start the vehicle at the same time, which allows you to get over rocks. 
And that's a manual transmission option? Yeah, that or, is a manual transmission only thing. Obviously, it just you don't need it when you're um, in an automatic transmission FJ. And I think these FJs are a couple, pound, a couple hundred pounds lighter than 4Runners as well. I don't know. Um, one other big complaint is the fuel tank is so small for what it is. And I look underneath it, and I know there's a lot of space, and I know the Australian market ones came with like a double fuel tank. Uh, I wish we were able to get that here, but um, maybe it's something that we can modify later. But the fuel tank is tiny. And with the supercharger running 91 octane, we get maybe 225 miles to tank. Yeah, it's not that good when you're in the middle of nowhere, huh? No, no. That's actually why I love the Tundra, because it has a 38-gallon tank. Tripping out on the diamond plate, plastic yeah. diamond yeah, plate. So they got is, some weird styling in this thing. Yeah, so this is interesting. I mean, I guess this was factory because if you look at the speaker and you look at the door cards, all of that is matching diamond, like fake plastic diamond plate. <laughs> so it's cheesy. ridiculous. I guess it wears well though. Yeah, I guess. I mean, there's just so many cool things about it. Like there's a storage cubby what? here. Um, there's there's the normal glove box there. There's no carpet, so you can actually like really clean this. It's just plastic underneath and it allows you to pretty much just like rinse out the inside if you need to. There's just so many little things about this that, that make it special. Let's take a look at the hatch real quick. So what's interesting to me is I feel like this is built for more for a US market because the GX's, they're Prada's in Japan and the hatch opens the other way. This actually opens the correct way for US. So let's say if you're loading groceries or whatever onto the curb, it opens the correct way for US market. I hate these reflectors, so I actually got uh, the Euro European or Japanese market reflectors that actually act as LED lights. So it's part of the brake lights or reverse fog lights. Um, I added these, these are a Toyota option. And I, I was, it, it was super cool to see that they made something like this just for storage, you know, whatever we need. An extra supercharger belt for the Magnuson supercharger. Um, yeah, it's just my truck, you know, I love this thing. It's uh, something that honestly, I feel like I'm gonna keep forever because Toyota made this and it's just so unique. I don't think there's anything else like it on the market that I can think of. Have you seen anything? No, I mean, this is competition for the Jeep, right? So uh, I think it's a more practical Jeep. It's got the independent front suspension, which makes it, I'm sure, you know, way better on the highway. And then uh, clearly it's capable. You know, I don't think you're going to do the ring con with this thing, but, but like a combination of driving it down here all the way to Glamis and then cruising around on the dunes and everything. Yeah. And then also being comfortable. That's a really good point. See, so I know for a fact the Jeep Wrangler, whether it be the two-door version or the four-door, the JL or the the old the old Jeep was a JK. Either a JK or a JL would be way more capable in certain things, right? So it would be more capable for rock crawling, for going up things that you know, you actually need a solid front axle. And also the automatic transmission will help a lot more. Those came in manual too, and I was looking at those at the same time. But I wanted something that was easier to drive on the street. I just wanted something that would last. And I also wanted something that was more capable for doing stuff like this. You know, now it makes plenty of power, especially after we put the supercharger on it. And I can't tell you, man, I've broken so many cars by asking people to follow me up certain things and they just can't make it and they'll snap axles and stuff. And I've <laughs> never snapped an axle. I've never broken anything, you know, knock on wood. Yeah, it's been reliable. It's a Toyota, it runs like a Toyota. Cool, all right, well, let's, uh, let's make it out of here without any broken axles. All right, <laughs> yeah. cool, all right. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. If you wanna support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.